Intel's new low end ain't too bad. Nvidia is in trouble with the Chinese government and uh, you might not be able to get the card you want anymore. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Tuesday, September 16th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today talking about reviews that have been dropping for the Core Ultra 3 205. This is the brand new budget CPU that's supposed to be coming out from the Team Blue chip makers and the reviews are indicating that it's about as good as we were expecting. 16% single core increase from the 14100, significant upticks in the multi-core performance. And it's even better when you start benchmarking the integrated GPU, in case that matters to you at all. It's essentially about the same uptick from the i5 to the Ultra 5. That's what you're seeing in the Ultra 3 from the i3. You get about a 75% boost in the iGPU performance, at least in the TimeSpy benchmark. But because of the high clock speed, the new architecture, it looks like the Ultra 3 for the roughly $120 it costs is going to be a pretty decent eight core CPU for people who want to be on the more affordable side of things. However, that does require you getting one of the new Intel motherboards and staying on that side. And you know, the whole platform needs to be considered, but the CPU pricing and the performance that you're getting doesn't look like AMD is even gonna be trying to uh, help us out in that sector. But you know who is trying to help you out? Today's video sponsor. Ports on laptops are starting to get crazy. Fewer in number for sure, but the versatility of what you can do with a single connection is getting bonkers. Thankfully, if you have at least one USB-C port on your device, this docking station from today's sponsor, Anchor, is gonna be a game changer for you. The Anchor Prime DL7400 docking station expands and your devices into a combined workspace, allowing you to use your laptop with three external displays, one at 8K and two at 4K, all at 60 Hertz. You can even monitor the displays via the screen, ensuring your resolution and refresh rate are always correct. Taking a look at the front of the DL7400 docking station, we're greeted with three USB-C ports with a fourth on the back. These ports are waiting to provide up to 160 watts of power and high-speed data transfer to all your little portable devices. For your laptop, the dock can supply up to 140 watts of juice on the back port and up to 100 watts for other devices from the three front ports when not charging the laptop. You can also monitor the power and data for each port. Speaking of the screen, this bunch of pixels is a 2.26 inch HD LCD fellow that lets you track all the things the dock is doing, charging, transferring data, tracking temps, and so on. Pairing the dock with the Anchor Dock Manager app opens up further possibilities with the ports, display, and functionality, including adding a customizable clock. Now, if I know anything about electronics, it's that things with screens and power supplies get hot. Anchor knows this too, and they've implemented an awesome cooling system, complete with an included fan for active cooling. When high temps are detected, the fan kicks on into one of two modes to balance efficient cooling with stable performance. I do also like that the vent is out the back so the warm air doesn't hang around on your desktop. Now, if you're looking for something similar, but with the power of Thunderbolt 5, Anchor has their Prime TB5 docking station, which we actually worked with not too long ago. This bad boy can provide transfer speeds of up to 100 120 gigabits per second, up to 140 watts of charging power, and expand your workspace with multiple displays, all packed into something not much larger than a softball. You might even kind of forget it's on your desk if you sneak it under a monitor riser. Step up your setup today and empower your laptop to be your ideal workstation. Pick up either the Anchor Prime DL7400 docking station or the Anchor Prime TB5 docking station via the links below. Huge thanks to Anchor for sponsoring. Well, I could definitely use those Anchor products to charge up the GPD Win five, which I'm highly intrigued in. And we now have some confirmed pricing for this bad boy. This thing has the Strix Halo chip, the AI Max Plus 395. Now we only have pricing for the Chinese market, but it does look like the 395 version. It's gonna start around $1,600 retail, $1,400 on the pre-sale. And if you wanna get the max version with 64 gigs of RAM and a four terabyte SSD, you're looking at roughly 2,100 bones. The AI Max 385 costs about four $1,400 and then the dock for it's gonna be about 85 bucks. The external battery is gonna be about 85 bucks. So it's not the most unreasonable handheld out there, especially considering the pricing of the Legion Go 2 that recently came out for a much significantly more powerful chip in the Strix Halo setup. The price point's not 
awful. It's not great either, but it didn't go over what I was expecting it to be, which is which is quite nice. And Apple was expecting the FDA to give them the go ahead when it comes to the hypertension sensor that's going to be baked into the Series 11 and Ultra 3 watches that are dropping later this week. And that has happened. Apple has received FDA clearance, not FDA approval for these, which should make it so that these watches can detect hypertension or also known as high blood pressure that's happening before their launch that's happening on this coming Friday. And Reese is coming at you with very deals, good savings. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And hey, here's your deals. Starting off, we have this up here, S5C CPU air cooler for only $16.99, making it $13 off. But then continuing the trend of budget cooling, we have this Thermorite TL M12 QW. These 120 millimeter ARGB case fans are available in a three pack for only $19.99, making it $12.91 off. And then lastly today, we have this ASRock Phantom Gaming Z890 Riptide Wi-Fi 7 ATX motherboard for only $154.89, making it $91.10 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, man, you're back to bread for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, looks like NVIDIA got too good of a deal when they acquired Mellanox a few years ago for $6.9 billion. The Chinese government now coming out and saying that NVIDIA has committed some antitrust violations for this acquisition. Mellanox, the networking company that NVIDIA picked up in order to start making some cool new things when it comes to their servers and how they interconnect and Chinese regulators coming out and saying that they had a violation of the conditional approval that they gave to them. Now, now there is some alleging that people behind the scenes knew that the Chinese government had this information for weeks and they are just now bringing it to light because the US and China are getting together and discussing trade agreements and this gives the Chinese government more leverage for all of that. And it's not exactly quite clear what China is looking to get out of this. The alleged fines could be between one and 10% of the previous year's sales. So big revenue money there when it comes to what China could be asking for, or they could potentially just be propositioning this as something that they could enforce, but they might not if other things are given to them in this new negotiation that's happening. We'll keep you updated on what's going on with Nvidia there. This is not the first antitrust investigation that they've had. They also were raided by French authorities, the American American Department of Justice was also supposed to be looking into things that NVIDIA has been doing. So they've got a lot on their plate and it's easy to forget about things when that happens. Just like we forget that the RTX 20 series may have been called the GTX 20 series. This was a idea that was floated around at one point and now somebody has found the prototype version of the GTX 2080 Ti. Showcasing pictures on Reddit of this non-functional card that doesn't have the branding of the 2080 Ti but does have the exact same shroud, does say uh, GeForce GTX instead of RTX and essentially it looks like it should be a 2080 Ti but does not work with any 2080 Ti BIOSes that are out there so it is essentially just a brick of a card nice little prop piece that could sit on a shelf like like we have here, except for that 4080 Doom GPU does work. It is a working GPU that's up there. We're just keeping it there for the current moment until we get our Doom case to put it in. And uh, we might have a harder time getting some Founders Editions for builds moving forward because over the weekend, reports were dropping and flying out that they were going end of life, the Founders Edition versions of the 5080 and 5090. They were not appearing on NVIDIA's websites, not just in the US, but in multiple different regions across the world, the UK, also had theirs taken away. Other countries also not seeing the 5080 and 5090 Founders Editions appearing on their website. So you can see that it was really only the 5070 that was appearing in various different areas. And Nvidia has come out and responded to this, essentially saying that these cards are still in production and you need to calm down because they are limited edition products. So from time to time, they go out of stock on our website and return when back in stock. The only problem with this explanation by Nvidia is that they have gone out of stock before and they've stayed on the website saying, out of stock. It has been a typical way of doing it. However, the new way of doing it is they are being removed from the website entirely, which made people think that they were going end of life, getting ready to prepare for the upcoming super series. And then you add into this all of the recent price drops that have been happening for these GPUs. We've been seeing 5070 Ti's under MSRP, 5080's and 5090's very much approaching MSRP. And it's been quite a set of circumstances that are indicating that Nvidia 
is potentially doing something. Now, as of the time of filming, the 5080 Founders Edition is back on the US NVIDIA website. The 5090 is nowhere to be seen, even if that is potentially uh, still being produced, it is not being highlighted on NVIDIA's website. So it could be a change in policy where they are now delisting instead of listing as out of stock, or it could be that there is something else going on and they're just uh, answering incorrectly with their public response to this. We'll keep you updated as we learn more about all this moving forward. And I want to see what you guys had to say in the backwards, the rear view on Friday's episode of Hot News. We got DGF Jake saying, how are you going to use Sterling? Is it even supported here in South Africa? You can't get it in South Africa. Like if you try to buy it in South Africa, it's not available there because of uh, government restrictions on Starlink operating there. But if you have a Starlink unit with the roaming plan, it does work. That's actually how uh, back in June when I was there, we were using Starlink to upload videos and all of that kind of stuff because it still works. The satellites are still present there. I mean, if you look at Starlink's maps, it's, you know, supporting a large portion of Sub-Saharan Africa. It's just that uh, getting your plan in South Africa is not uh, allowed, whereas mine is an American plan with roaming and it allowed it to work. I, I heard some reports from South Africans while I was there that they had Starlink and it like shut off after two months. I don't know if that would potentially happen to me, but I have a long standing history of having an American Starlink account and it would be clear that I'm traveling. So I don't, I don't exactly know. I don't need it now that I have my fiber installed. Yeah, Starlink works just fine for me at least. And we got Sid Lives and several other people talking about my situation of trying to watch American football while I'm over there saying, set up a private VPN between South Africa and your US office. My son does this with his devices in a home server. I'm not gonna do that. I know that this is not a, a popular stance and it's not prescriptive. This is just how I operate. If these, you know, streaming companies say that I can't watch this content in a different country, I'm cool with that. I'm not gonna pay up. I'm not gonna keep my subscription, but I'm also not gonna try to subvert that um, and find ways around it. I'm just gonna deal with it <laughs> and find a, a different way of uh, watching or just deal with not watching. I don't view me having access to content as a thing that I must have. I can go without and that's totally fine for me and so I will. So, you know, if I can't find a way within uh, content uh, licensing regulations to watch American football over there, I just won't and that's okay. That's the good thing. I'm, I have no problems with it. You know, setting up a private VPN to doing that for me subverts that. I have a private VPN set up for other reasons, uh, for accessing my content more directly, like my, my actual like work content and like files on my NAS here. But like, as far as when it comes to like being able to access the NFL, I, I'll just not, it's fine. It's fine for me. If you want to do it another way, totally fine for you. I'm not going to prescribe. I'm just going to tell you how I'm doing it. And I'm not doing this episode of Hot News anymore. I'll see you back here for more of the Hot Tech News later.